Okay. In the previous lecture, we discussed E2 reaction, elimination reaction for synthesis of alkenes. Now here we will just look at the reaction mechanism placed in form of this graph. This is an exothermic graph and it shows that when reactants, they're converted into products, energy is released. And over here, as you can see, this is the transition state. This one is the transition state. And this is the energy of activation that gives us this peak, right? So in this transition state, we have this compound and this compound. We have both ethanol and this compound, ethoxidine and this compound. So it means that in this reaction, the rate will depend on these two things. Number one, this compound. And number two, the substrate that is reacting with it. So we will say that the rate, the rate of reaction will require all these two things. You see, all these two things are given in the rate equation. Therefore, this reaction is known as E2 or bimolecular reaction in which both molecules are taking place. Moving forward, when we talk about this reaction as given above, we will also tell which type of orientation the molecule will have while it is reacting. I'll zoom it out a bit. And here you can see, I have drawn it like this, the circle and the circle with three lines and this one like this, like a V triangle, right? So it shows like a cat, for example, it has its head, two legs, and then in, at its back, it has its tail and two legs. So what we're saying is this carbon atom is binded to three things, hydrogen, 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 and the carbon behind has three things attached, okay? So the leaving group, and the incoming group, they must be anti-coplanar. So this is known as anti-coplanar arrangement. If I say that I have bromine over here, sorry, I have bromine over here, I must have hydrogen over here. So the leaving group and the incoming group should be co anti-coplanar. Now moving forward, the so Zsev rule versus the Hoffman's rule. If we have this compound in which we have one, two, and three carbon atoms like this, one, two, and three carbon atoms and bromine attached here, we'll look at the alpha hydrogens. Now how many alpha hydrogens we have? We have only one alpha hydrogen. Now we will look at beta hydrogen because in elimination reaction, we are concerned with beta hydrogens. So if I say how many beta hydrogens I have, I will say that I have, this is also beta hydrogen, this is also beta hydrogen, this is also beta hydrogen, all these are also beta hydrogen, right? All of these are beta hydrogens. But I will look at the one in which there will be more substituted groups. For example, it can react with this hydrogen and it can react with this hydrogen. Okay, all these three are equivalent, all, all these three are equivalent and all these three are equivalent, right? So I will say whether it will react with this, this hydrogen or with this hydrogen, both are possibilities. So let's go down a bit. Okay, over here we can see that there are two graphs, the orange one and the purple one. When more energy is released, it means it is more stable. Right, so more stable one is showing us the alkene that is one, two, and three. Try substituted alkene. And over here we have one, two, only di substituted alkene because this carbon atom is not binded to another alkyl group. So this is di substituted alkene and this is tri substituted alkene. Whenever we have a more stable alkene formed, it is known as the Zsev's rule. And when we have less stable alkene formed, it is known as the Hoffman's rule, right? And Zsev rule is formed in response to addition of ethanol, ethoxidine, or any small base. But when we will add a bulkier base, such as tertiary butyl or butoxidine, then we will have this compound that is less substituted.
these are two things that are required in Z7 Hoffman rule. I will repeat that whenever we have more substituted and whenever whenever we are using smaller base, it will give us it will give us the Z7 rule. And we have less substituted alkane with um, uh, in presence of a bulkier group, we will have Hoffman's rule. Right. So this is all for right now. We'll discuss their mechanisms later on.